how do you get more revelation? You may have noticed if you ever had a revelation from God, that it's almost like euphoria sweeps through your entire body and your heart is just set ablaze and you feel so free inside. So of course you're going to want more of that. So here's the challenge though. When you get a revelation, you need to put it into practice. Because otherwise you're going to be like that person that goes looks in the mirror and then turns away and if they don't shave or brush their teeth or brush their hair, um, it's, it wasn't really any good to go and look in that mirror. So here's, and so when you turn towards the light of truth, automatically you're going to be turning towards the light of revelation. Because it's in that place of the light of the Lord that you're going to see more light. It says in, your, in his light, you see light. When you act on what you know is true, it, it opens you up. It's just like, I'll just give a natural example. Like let's say a kid's putting square pegs into like the holes and they're not at that age where they're really developed to understand that square goes into square and round goes into round. And then their parent tells them, hey buddy, just put that one in this hole. And then suddenly when they do it, it's like something clicks in their understanding. They're like, oh, so that should work with the next one. It's the same way in every area of the kingdom, in every area of healing, is as we grow up into Christ, you have to step out and be obedient to the Father. And when you're obedient, understanding comes. Where it's not just your it's not just that you you're seeing wow, God's really cool, but when you're seeing him work through you that's like a whole new thing because and, and Lord help me help me to get the words with this because I'm, I'm trying my best to explain it and sometimes it's difficult but it's a difference when you just see God move over here through somebody a great man or woman of God and then God and then you step out in obedience and you see God heal somebody through you and you realize it's the same Holy Ghost in you that's in that other quote great man or woman of God um, because really you are a great man or woman of God because Jesus Christ is in you it says test yourselves to see if you're in the faith know you not that Jesus Christ is in you that's where you get faith at you know it says in Hebrews that you're to fix your eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of faith but the problem is if you fix your eyes on the experience rather than the person, then you're going to get tossed around. So back to how do you get more revelation? You act on the truth you know because if you believe what you heard, of course you're going to pit your feet to it. Um, and, and here's the challenging thing is oftentimes you feel a little unsteady. You're like, uh, I don't want to displease people. But guys, the place of getting rid of that fear of man is is where you decide I love Jesus more than any other person in this world. As he said, you know, if you put other people above me, you're not worthy of me. But guys, when you, you start to, though you may step out in something God's called you to do, it might not please everybody. But as you step on obedience, man, that fear falls away because you realize Jesus in you is so much bigger than anything else around you. So it says, if you are a doer of the word, it says, everyone that hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. That's acting on, on revelation. And people almost see like truth and revelation as a separate thing. I see them, they work as one because when you get the understanding of truth, that's called revelation. Um, <clears throat> and it also says like, if you don't, Regarding like putting truth into action, revelation into action, it says, For as the body with the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And it says about the Hebrews, they were 40 years in the wilderness. Moses, the great man of God, was doing all sorts of miraculous stuff. But it says they did not die in faith. 
they experienced the miraculous through the faith of Moses, but they didn't make that faith their own. It says that for us was the gospel preached as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And that's in Hebrews 4.12. And that's a saddening thing, guys, is, is when you, if you don't put it into practice, it's not going to profit you. It's just like, um, it's just like pulling back, if you were doing archery, if you're pulling back your bow and you don't release it, the arrow, that, that arrow is never going to hit the target. And I tell you, getting rid of the shakiness, the immaturity, whatever it is, it's going to take practice. And it, you got to practice, and that, that's biblical patience is where you keep after it. It's holy endurance. It's not tolerating the works of the devil. It's, it's a patience that is persevering. And our American definition of patience is just kind of sit around and wait or, or be like laid back or passive. And that's not God's definition of patience. And there's so many of you out there that need to hear it because... Because God made you to be passionate and not tolerate the works of the devil. And people are telling you, sit around and wait. No, don't be pushed by a spirit of fear, but be, be drawn by the spirit of God within you to do what is right and act on what is right. And, <clears throat> and it says that we, when we are fully grown, we're going to be like our teacher, Jesus. And Jesus, he, he, uh, he flowed in Revelation constantly. He was releasing truth constantly. He had understanding constantly. And yet he got a lot of flack for saying it. So if you're going to grow up into Jesus, you're going to start getting a lot of flack for what you're saying. But let not that flack be because you're just doing something stupid. But let that flack be because you have a heart of love and passion to build up the body of Christ. And it says the way that we grow, it's Ephesians 4, it says, we speak the truth in love and we grow up into Christ who is the head. And for years, I read it the way is just the one being spoken to grows. And yes, if they receive the instruction and act on it, they grow. But it says we. And I got the other side of that we. It said, if I speak the truth to you, even if you don't receive it at all and you don't act on it at all, that's on you. But because I was obedient, I grow, and then suddenly it's like a whole new world opens to me. I get understanding. And and man, it's like when it's almost like you're you're living in Jesus' footsteps. Where it's like you're standing there and you're seeing the way the things the way that he sees things. And I mean it's just like when somebody is adamantly against the gospel. And you're standing in that place where you're not offended by them. You're not hurt by their words. But you just see, man, they are so blinded by the devil. Just like Paul wrote, where they were, it's like there's a veil put over their eyes. Where they're not seeing what's in front of their face. He said, this veil, this thing that's covered up from them from seeing the truth, the revelation, the understanding. It's unbelief. So, let it. And, and here's the thing, guys, is if you let yourself get preoccupied by, well, I was a little shaky when I stepped out, <laughs> how do you think you're going to get rid of that shakiness? You're not going to get it by sitting on your thumbs. You're going to get it by speaking it out. And, and, and here's another thing is in Scripture it says, you know, he who's, um, I don't remember how to exactly quote it, but it's, the concept is he who's learning, let him share all good things with, with the teacher. So in other words, if, if you're, that's how you grow in Christ too, is if you're like, you just discovered something really cool in God's word, um, go and share it with somebody. Build them up, encourage them up, because it's not just about you gathering all this information, it's about you releasing it, sharing the joy of it, setting people free. And like, I'll tell you one, I was just on a Skype with somebody the other day, and one of the things they said is, you know, that the government will be on his shoulders. And I was like, well, what's what's that about? And then suddenly it just it dawned on me, and they actually had the same revelation, but they hadn't gotten to speaking it out yet. I said, oh my gosh, we're the body of Christ. <laughs> He's the head, who's the shoulders? We're one. 
And and when I, I really thought, it's like, man, and it clicked, like, my understanding, like, well, yeah, because we're the ambassadors of the kingdom. We're the ones, you know, supposed to be laying the hands. We're the ones supposed to be speaking the command and just seeing the Spirit of God flow through us to change this earth. And and that's the thing is, um, order for Jesus to come back, the church has to grow up to look like him. Read Ephesians 4. <laughs> read, read all of the Pauline epistles, period. <laughs> Guys, that, that hasn't happened. So we got a long ways to go. Because the church, you know, the way they're walking, you know, defeated or sick or, or under bondage, like babies, like children, they got to grow up. And, and I know it's, it seems challenging at times, but you see somebody that's got... Got it working. You want to learn from them. Ask them questions. But don't just ask them questions for the sake of building up knowledge. Because that puffs up. But, but ask them questions for the sake of love. Because you want to be built up, not puffed up. And, and go and put it into work. Bye. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>